So I'm gonna be showing you guys exactly how you could build an outbound AI voice agent inside of Saltly for your business. And the way this kind of operates is pretty simple. You're going to be taking some information from your CRM system. I mean, when a certain action gets committed inside of that system, we're gonna to wanna to send off this call automatically. When that call goes out, we're gonna control the conversation inside of Thoughtly. We're then going to take the data that was collected from that conversation and pass it back into your CRM system. So I left it up to a vote, me being the only person voting, and I'm gonna be using GHL, Go High Level, for the CRM system at hand here. But keep in mind that this works with just around any reputable CRM system that has maybe an automations builder or something along those lines inside of it. So with that, I'm gonna jump on a thoughtly real quick. We'll start building the agents. Then we're gonna worry about uh, the pre-call and post-call automations after that. So first things first, I want you to jump on thoughtly and I want you to come to agents. Um, Keep in mind, this is kind of our template account. This is where we store some of the templates that we would be giving to you if you did come aboard. But we're going to be pressing new agent and then let's just name this whatever we want here. We'll put outbound agent and press create. Now we go ahead and create our outbound agent and we're brought to this page here that shows us three nodes. I'm kind of gonna fly through this here of what an outbound re-engagement agent typically consists of. Um, maybe we're looking to get transferred to a representative or maybe we're looking to book an appointment with an associate. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start building this agent and I'm gonna check back with you actually when I'm done with this and I'll show you exactly what I did. All right, so I just finished up this agent here. It took me around 10 minutes. It's an extremely simple agent. We're just shooting off calls to people who previously showed interest getting their attention and getting them transferred to a live agent to get them hooked onto an insurance plan. I made this centered around the insurance space. So the call gets triggered. We then say, hey, this is Ava with ABC Insurance. I've received your request to save money on your home insurance. How are you doing today? Uh, from there, the person might ask, who am I calling? Who's calling? Why are you calling me? Yeah, how'd you get my number? Whatever it might be, keep in mind the agent is smart enough to detect that and answer the questions accordingly to lower the person's guard. But we're inevitably trying to get to this note here to say, can I transfer you to a licensed agent? We do this through a couple of different outcomes. If the caller says they don't wanna be spoken to, we go to this end note saying, uh, no problem, sorry for the confusion. Um, or if they say you have talking to the wrong person, no problem, we uh, just hang up the call from there. Next we say, I want to transfer you to an agent. We have three different outcomes. Yes, the caller wants to be transferred. No, it's not a good time. And caller is not interested and does not want to be called. If they do not want to be called, we simply hang up the call saying, hey, apologize. And I'll send you an email. You can get back to us whenever. Now, if the person wants to call back later, we just double down here through another message node where we say um, it takes just a couple of minutes, can we get you connected now? If not, we could schedule a call back. We could also put a prompt note here, just being like, tell the caller that it only takes a few minutes and we could get them connected real quick or we could schedule a call back. So you could do a message or a prompt note. I like message notes because it kind of conceptualizes it and helps the conversation move further, how I want it to be said. Um, but we're really trying to get to this note here. When the person agrees to be transferred, we're going to say, we do need you to have your renewal declaration pages handy um, to make sure that we could give you the savings you deserve. Now, we make sure that they have them available right now. If they don't, no problem. Uh, license agent will assist you in obtaining them and determining your savings. Now, we ask one more question if their renewal is within 30 days. Uh, within might have messed up some of these nodes. Yes, it is within 30 days, we then transfer them. If it's not, we then say, hey, no problem at all. Uh, if we could find you savings today, would you be ready to switch? This way, if it's not within 30 days, they could switch their payments and the license agent will be able to do that on the call. If not, we could schedule that call back for 30 days uh, before the renewal. So you could capture their kind of business that way. 
but if they are willing to switch, we go directly to the transfer. So we have three qualifying questions, each funneling into each other. And this last one here, if they're not qualified again, we just say, hey, we'll schedule a call back within that 30 day period. What day and time do you want to schedule a call back? Uh, we then schedule that call back and we confirm with them if the call back time they requested is correct. If it is, we then end the call. Now keep in mind, this agent was built somewhere around 10 minutes, could use a little sharpening up. And also, if you're a part of the platform, you just gotta reach out to us and I will send this over to you, no problem, just so you could study this exactly how I did it. But let's say we do transfer them, we send it to this transfer node, we say, uh, you're being transferred to a license agent now, please stand by, and then it ends the call, transfers to your associate, who could then close this sale. So now that we have this agent built, we could play with the settings, we could play with the voices, uh, we could play with the conversation type, play with the genius so it has a fully functional knowledge base of your business and can handle objections how you'd like, play with the presence, the post call, and the voicemails, we could do all of that. Plenty of resources on how you could play with these settings to make it really customizable. But I'm gonna go with this, this flow right here. Now I'm gonna work on the automations which will trigger off these calls. So this is called a pre-call automation. And the way we're gonna do that is by going into your CRM. Like I mentioned, we're gonna be using Go High Level for this example. And I want you to go to your automations tab. Now I know that a lot of these CRMs have automations. If you do, simply go inside that automations tab and then start a new automation. You'll then be brought to this page or a similar page to this. Um, I'll just name this demo pre-call. From there, you're going to want to create a trigger. Now the enrollment trigger is gonna be sending off this call, so we wanna make sure that it's automatic and it only sends off the calls to the right people. So this could be a tag that was added, a uh, pipeline change, maybe uh, a certain field that was updated inside this contact card. Whatever it might be, this is what's going to be sending off those calls. So let's, let's make this up right now and just say pipeline stage has been changed. And this is typically done automatically inside your CRM and how your system operates. So let's say the pipeline stage is sales pipeline or AI call attempts, right? So maybe you've already set one up uh, as, as, as we have here. So pipeline stage has officially been changed or maybe a tag has been added. If the tag is added equals call. That's gonna automatically trigger off this call. We're then going to send a webhook. That webhook needs a URL. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump back to Thoughtly, jump in the automations, create a new automation, and look up webhook. Get that URL, copy that URL, and paste it inside of your CRM. We could then send custom data that we want to be inserted inside this payload, including the person's name, maybe their email, phone number, um, and perhaps anything else you would like to say inside this conversation, because we could mention all of this data inside of the conversation. So if I had this person's dog's name inside of my CRM, we could pass that through and, and mention it via metadata. But uh, for, this dem for the demo purposes here, we're just gonna do name, email, and phone number. So we'll do first name for name. We will do their email here, and we will do their phone number. We could then save this action. And then we could run a test. All right, so I just ran a test through. I can refresh this. And now we have the payload that came through. Now we take this payload and we're going to want to create or update a contact inside of Thoughtly by connecting this action called create or update contact and then putting in the designated information. So we have, where is it? We have our custom data here of everything we inserted. Keep in mind this payload is massive, but you can make it more condensed. This is, we'll do just fine though. And then we'll put the phone number 
here as well. We could also put the email, but I'm actually just gonna skip that for this demo purpose. So now that we got the name and phone number, we create or update the contact, and then we're going to want to call that contact. Click that lightning bolt, put in the ID, and now we're gonna call that contact with the agent that we just created. And we could, like I mentioned, you could also put in metadata here. That metadata will be, could be brought up inside the conversation using double bracket metadata dot whatever the key is. So if I put like spouse, and then I put the payload in here for spouse, it would be metadata dot spouse, and then to end it with a double curly bracket. However, we don't have any metadata, so we'll avoid that. Next thing I'd like to say here is you can also put the amount of times you want to call these people. So maybe we want to call them seven times with one day in between. So seven attempts, time delay in value, one day in between. Now, if they don't answer, we're going to keep on calling them until they do. When this has been done, I want you to give it a name and I want you to save it right up here. Confirm and save. Now that we have the pre-call automation done, all we have to do inside of our CRM is change that pipeline or add the tag and it will send off as many calls as it needs to. So if you do this to 20,000 leads, it will send it off to 20,000 leads within a matter of, I would say, five minutes or so. But let's start to focus on the post-call automation as well. So we're going to want to send this data back when the call has been finished. The way that we're going to do that is by creating another automation, sending that data back with the trigger named on call completed, select the agent that we're using here, select the output. You'll see the payload that comes with it. We have our transcript, summary, recording URL, tag, the metadata that we passed in, and some more stuff that most likely wouldn't be necessary like duration in milliseconds, but it could be useful either way. We're then going to either extract more fields from this conversation. So let's say we ask them a question like, in, in this example, we ask them the question, Is your, are you within 30 days of renewal? We could actually extract that field from the conversation and see if they answered that. If they did, we could then put that inside of our CRM somewhere. Um, just for demo purposes, I'm going to avoid extraction fields and the custom prompts because there's so much you could actually do there. Instead, I'm just going to go ahead and send a webhook with all of the standard payload found inside of this. The way we're going to do that is by sending a webhook back to our CRM. Now, keep in mind, you can also use our native integrations here. We actually do have a native integration with GHL, but I want to make this more dynamic for everything that you might be using it for. So I'm going to be sending a webhook back to GHL inside of a new automation, and that trigger is going to be, you guessed it, an incoming or inbound webhook. You're going to copy this webhook. You're going to put it back inside of Thoughtly. Now that webhook is tied in, we're going to do a post method and we're going to put in the body. So we have the person's maybe name, we have their phone number, we have the recording, we have the summary, we have the transcript. And we also have the tag for how the conversation did go. You could do that directly through the platform or you could do it with a custom prompt before this webhook. Um, so I'm gonna tie in all of these right now. I don't wanna bore you with tying that in, so let me do that right now. All right, so now that that has been done, we have all the information that's tied in, getting sent through the body of the webhook. We're then going to press generate and it's gonna send that payload over to our CRM. We'll fetch the examples and you can see it right here. Now we have all that information. So from there, we're going to create or update a, the contact that we just called via the, let's do phone number, or we could even do the name, but let's do phone number as the search. So it's gonna query this contact and see if it does exist. We're gonna do that with the phone number. We're also gonna pass through the recording so we could put that call recording inside of our custom fields, inside of our CRM. That'll be right here. Could also do transcripts, 
Once again, these have to be custom fields that you've inputted previously. Uh, the summary and the tags, call summary. All right, so now that we have this payload going to the designated fields, I'll pretty much run through what's going on here. We're getting the webhook caught in. We're then creating or updating the contact with the recording transcript summary and also the tag. I'd throw in the tag in there as well. Keep in mind, these have to be custom fields that you've made previously inside your CRM, and now we're kind of just connecting them from Thoughtly. Uh, we can also make the tags change. We could do so much more. But once the data is in here, we then pass through our data via post call uh, automations. We could actually do the call attempts it's on as well, how many times that we have called them. We would do that via another automation inside your CRM. But I would save that for a later video. I'm going to name this post call action, post call automation. Save it and publish it. So now we have our trigger that's gonna trigger off these calls. We have our agent that's gonna make these calls and now we have our post call automation that's gonna send everything back. Now is gonna come time where you're gonna play a little bit with your system so you could calculate exactly how many calls you've had, uh, what are the tags, how are the conversations going so you could view these analytics inside your CRM. When you do this and once you kind of create a dashboard for yourself, whatever CRM you are using, it should look something like this. So you could see exactly how many tags and how many recordings you're receiving uh, each day, and that'll be how many calls that have been made. So you can see here, we got 548 calls. Uh, we have the statuses, the tags that I mentioned to you. These are the analytics we're seeing. Uh, we have the amount of times that we've called each one of these leads and kind of which funnel is in, in which. The tags in a different view here. So you could see how many are no answer, not interested, call back do not contact or transferred. Um, this allows you to kind of take all the information that was put inside of Thoughtly. As I mentioned, we're not gonna be viewing the analytics inside of there. We're gonna be viewing it inside of something we already use. So you could build something like this with a couple of automations and a couple of, uh, couple of clicks on the mouse to build a new dashboard inside your CRM. Now you could view everything here of how everything's performing. And this will happen autonomously. Thousands of calls could be triggered a day and you could wake up the next morning and notice that you triggered off 548 calls and that you booked 30 appointments in the last 30 days with your AI voice agent. So I hope that this was helpful in the way that you kind of comprehend outbound AI agents. One thing I will leave you with is that outbound cold calling with AI voice agents is illegal. So do keep in mind that all of your leads have to be opted in if you do want to run these campaigns. Opted in means that they've provided consent um, on your website just showing that they do consent to a call. If you have that consent, you then could give them a call with your AI voice agent and re-engage them into your services. So with that, that's building an AI voice agent campaign for outbound calls. I hope that this was helpful for you guys.